Hello, and welcome back to the BotSpot. Today, we're going to begin a series that I've called The Danger of Modernizing the Church. 2 Timothy 3, verses 1 through 7. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. In modern America, everything focuses on me. TV, the internet, the media. Everything is fast, personal, and disposable. Some feel the church should also be about me. Some churches have taken strides to accommodate everyone and make them feel good. How have they done so, and are there any warnings against this? Let's look at some of the aspects that other churches may focus on, and whether or not we should do the same. The first of which will be a focus on numbers. The mentality behind it is, we want everyone at church. Also, everyone learns of heaven and positivity, so people keep coming. Look at all of the baptisms. We're doing God's will, right? So what are the negatives behind it? Soft preaching or teaching. We can't offend anyone, or they may not come back. Sin and hell are touched on far less, if at all. Acceptance of members who openly sin outside of the church is also something they focus on. Matthew 6, 24. You can't serve God and mammon. No such thing as a part-time Christian. If you're ungodly outside of services, can you worship in a godly way? Or 2 Timothy 4, verses 2 through 4. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort, with all long-suffering and teaching, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. 1 Corinthians 5 shows the danger of allowing sin amongst them. In verse 13 it reads, Put away from yourselves the evil person. There, this is a danger of larger churches. Greed. Church marquees boasting of new buildings or events provided by God. How can that be if those things are not in the Bible? The numbers may be higher, but how many return for their more boring services? Now these are all unscriptural methods. Fellowship halls, concerts, Banquets, passion plays, funded by contributions. We provide the passages for what we do, can they? Speaking of heaven and positive things is good, but speaking of hell, sin, and death is just as important. Baptisms are good if done for the right reason, but how many continue the walk of life as a Christian afterwards? Those who are not in megachurches, it's easy for us to write off. We're not a big church. We don't have to worry about a love of numbers, right? Really? They may have a personal concern of numbers of converts, maybe a less concern of our own members. We care so much about our own family what about our church family? 
And do we love them the same way? If someone has a problem in their family, we do all we can to help them. What about in services? If one comes forward, we pray for them. Then what? How far does our love grow? We try to make sure our family follows the right path. Is the same true for our spiritual brothers and sisters? If not, the problem is a lack of love. Can we really love those we know so little about? Thank you for your attention.